My name is Joe Gilchrist. I started here on April 17th, 1978, with what happened to be my birthday. All we've tried to do since then is try to help people enjoy life and put some of the greatest music, we think, available in the country in front of people. I'm Pat McCall, along with Joe here. I've been here for over 30 years. We got a thing called Good Times, Good Music. That's our trademark, but you know what? That's an understatement for the tremendous contribution all these wonderful artists have given to the floor of Bama, which has gone on to make us one of the best known honky-tonks in the entire world. As you watch the rest of this, you'll see some of our great players that are reminiscing about the good old times, just like we do. Thank you for being part of this. Hey everyone, I'm Big Earl here at the world famous Floribama, and we're here with my good buddy, my old friend, Mr. Larry Strickland. Strick9, how you doing today, Larry? Man, I could be worse, Jack. I could be married again. Other than that, I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what's that MOL mean? Oh, I see it right there, Men of Leisure. Yeah, That's that was a, a duo that uh, Larry Brown and I put together, two keyboards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. I, yeah, I heard you guys. Yeah, we didn't, uh, we had to break up because nobody to hire us. Well, I, when I heard you had to break up because y'all never show up, I think y'all were <laughs> back at dinner in Boys Town. No, 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 no. We, we showed up. It's just nobody liked our music because we weren't family friendly. Yeah. Like you. Yeah, right, I am. <laughs> Last thing you want to do is offend someone. <laughs> you right. We are back for round two. We're going to do one song and take a little break. When we come back, it's going to get nasty. <laughs> you like his beard and he likes your butt. So, Larry, uh, how, uh, I always start with this. How long have you worked here at the floor band? I started working here off and on with two different bands uh, in 1985. I started off coming out playing with a group called uh, the Diving Ducks Blues Band. And then they broke up and then I got with a group called Cool Runnings, which was just total reggae music. And we started playing here then. After a while I got tired of that and we, we split it up. And then I, uh, I came out here one time to jam with Kathy Pace. And uh, I ended up falling in love with this place because it was the club owner, Joe Gilchrist, at the time was, he loved music and he, uh, he loved original music. And he was like, in, in, no, no key, uh, a club owner I've ever been, been associated with. All the other ones just want to go, oh, you got to be on time, you got to do this, you got to do that. And here's your check. I, I just <laughs> cutting their hearts out to write you a check or pay you your money. Joe was just, yeah, okay, let's do it. All right, well, you know, you can't, I don't want you to say that word on stage a bunch. And I went, well, why the, not, <laughs> not, I mean, you know, what the, does it matter? <laughs> oh, I've heard you say it a bunch, Larry. What? <laughs> that not word. Yeah, oh, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember when I was working here, when I first met you, you come through the door and Donna said, Donna Slater said, hey, we got a keyboard player who's going to work with us now. He used to work with us, uh, Larry Strickland. I said, okay, I don't think I know him. And I think you'd have left for a while. I had arthritis and tendonitis in my, in my hands. I had to take a year off from playing. So it was oh, okay. very painful. I had to just give it, just rest and not do anything and let it uh, heal up. So, right. So, so that was it. Now you were one of the original people at Boys Town. Is that right? I'm one of the originals. Yes. I mean, there's a, a several that uh, lived there a couple of years before I moved in, but I've been there since I think around '94. And you're you're the you're the last man standing over I'm there. I'm the right? last man standing at Boys Town. Y'all ever have any fun over there at Boys Town? Not like we used to. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you can tell us from back in the day at Boys Town? Well, without I, us getting it, shut down? If I did, I'd have to kill you. Yeah, I, I, I know you would. I, I know one story. That <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> I know a million of them. <laughs> so I'm working here with you. I hadn't been here two months, and this little band from Auburn comes up to me and says, Jack, oh, you're not going to believe what Larry did. I said, why? He said, we was over on Break It, over at Boys Town at Larry's place, and uh, 
he set a, a part of your body part on fire. Yeah. <laughs> you poured scotch on part of you, on a certain part of your body yeah. part and set it on fire. Yeah. Why did you do that? That's after I had put my earring in that certain party body part. <laughs> And when it when I set it on fire, it uh, got hot, and it, it, and so I was frantically uh, uh, putting out the fire. Why did you do it? You just felt just like drunk, you high, you yeah. know, eating a board. Well, you know, you know what I, here, here's what I'm thinking, Larry. I think I'm thinking. When they came in here and told me that, it's like their faces were white and pale, and yeah. they were a little man still in college in Auburn. And I guarantee you when they got home, they said, man, we're, we're going to study hard and graduate because this <laughs> musician life isn't going to be for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes uh, a certain kind of... Boy, to, there's so to, many stories to, I wish I could tell about you. But yeah, now, now you got to be an author. You've written two books now. Tell us yeah. about your book. Okay, well, this first one uh, came out uh, a few years back, and this is Stories of My Life. Uh -huh. From a, about when I was four and a half till I think I was 54 before I finished this book. Well, I mean, stories up until then. Uh, it's a bunch of, um, uh, some are funny, some are sad, but they're all true and all revealing. Uh -huh. I don't hold nothing back. Of course, there is a couple of stories I could not print because there's a thing called statute of limitations. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, can't, we don't do want, yeah, the feds would be after me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and then the, <laughs> my second book, which just came out about three weeks ago, is Redbeard's Revenge. This first one's Tales from the Davenport. And the second one is Redbeard's Revenge. This is about a pirate ship that belonged to a Redbeard the pirate, and it w sunk in a hurricane where the pass was. Used to be right here where the four Bama is. Right. The hurricane sunk his ship, and it was laden with gold. So it's underneath the floor of Bama. And anyway, that same hurricane enclosed the pass and opened up a new one about, about a mile and a half down the road. So. Then it goes to modern times, which is a humorous murder mystery. Does it have good-looking women in it? Oh, yeah. There's uh, Crystal. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she's yeah. buxom and blonde and blue-eyed. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, got, I had to read it. got a beautiful mole on her oh, cheek. Oh, yeah. And, Who uh, wouldn't love that? Sexy, deep voice. I'm going to have to read that because I did read this one, Larry. Yeah. And uh, you have, I will tell you, your, this is the only book that I've ever read. Some chapters are like a half a page long. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. Uh, well, I was I marketed it as a toilet, a <laughs> toilet uh, seat. I uh, it, is, it is a good read. Yeah. You guys get your Tales from Davenport, which is Sofa, and Red Beard's Revenge, which I haven't read it yet, but I'm definitely going to. Uh, Larry, uh, so before we get out of here, is there anything you can remember that that stands out about all the years you played here at Fort Alabama? Uh, actually, Jack, it's, it's all a, been a big whirlwind. <laughs> I know it has. I, I, every now and then I wake up in a cold sweat and go, I can't believe I did that. And I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many years did we play together? Oh, shoot, I don't know. Probably five, six, seven, eight, probably, something like that. Probably so. Yeah. And, and you're still working out here? You play every now and then? You're, you're helping with sound? Yeah. And still over enjoying life? Yeah, Boys Town, the last man standing. And, and you, you have your books and stuff down at the stair bar just yeah. about every day? And uh, also, if uh, I have other product to sell, uh, a couple of CDs, and uh, I have a I have made a audio book out of the Tales from the Davenport, which is a three CD audio book. Well, and I, I do the narration. I, I, I heard that, Larry. I wouldn't promote that. I mean, you need, next time you need to narrate it when you're not <laughs> having a couple of cocktails. Because that's, I mean, you know, that's well, that's that's what makes it more. I authentic. really couldn't understand it. Does. <laughs> <laughs> it, without you, it wouldn't be that way, Larry. I tell you, if it would be, we love you. Uh, oh, well, hold before we go on, sign off. I, I would like to let the folks know that if you go to my website, you'll be able to buy either one of these books and my other CDs that I have. And my address is www.larrystrickland.net. All right, dot net, not yeah. dot com. Dot net. Well, I love you. When you gonna shave? Uh, as soon as I make my first million. Go ahead. I, well, I guess you'll be growing it out a while if you yeah, like me. Yeah, if I, yeah, I got that. I love you, Larry, and uh, don't set anything else on fire this week. No, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> okay, hi, folks. My name's Larry Strickland. Uh, I'm one, I've been asked to try to paint a picture of how old Boys Town was. 
that's kind of hard to do because now it's all gone. It's just the, we have the yacht club over here. That's where Boys Town used to be. Um, and it was just a hodgepodge of trailers, RVs, tents. It was a lot of fun. What can I say? It was just, there was so much going on with so many different personalities. It was wonderful. You could actually, there was a hammock strung up in one of the, between a couple of the trees and I'd wake up sometimes and get out of my trailer and come down and there'd be somebody I had no idea who they were sleeping it off from the night before. Met a lot of good people. There was a lot of guitar pools at night. People just sitting around on stumps and picking their guitars and singing. It was a great time down here in the old boys town. And they go, oh, you're so lucky, you're so lucky. And I tell them, luck has nothing to do with it. It's a matter of being, I was, I'm blessed. I was blessed to find this place, and I was blessed to be hired here, and blessed to be able to play here for years and years. And now, I'm the last man standing in Boys Town, and uh, hopefully I'll be standing here a, 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 a lot longer. But uh, as far as being lucky, nah, luck had nothing to do with it. It was called perseverance and working hard at my craft and my trade and believing in myself and believing in the people. The people, without the people, I am nothing. I'm just another soul out here. I, so we can't say we can't none of that. Well, we can say yeah, but we can't say. We can like, say. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, see what I'm saying. So if I do ask them stuff, we might have to, we might have to slightly. Or well, about her. she. They, that's what the, she can do. That's her job in editing. She's an editing person. Yeah, she can just put a big black mark over your mouth when you say something wrong. You better just put that something on her right now. I mean, just put some black duct tape on him and save you from editing. Yeah. Where is it at? Yeah. <laughs>